Hey everyone, how are you now? James Whelan here, well, somewhere, Australian Mutual Funds Exchange uh, for today, which is great. Just giving you the seven minute run through of the markets, uh, whatever I can see out there right now. Now my big thesis went out to clients today. It's gonna hit uh, other places tomorrow. Just talking about how I do honestly believe that we are in the midst of a recession right now. I do believe that Tuesday, the 6th of June, what are we in? June, July, oh my goodness, June. Uh, was the capitulation for the Australian market. The Australian psyche realised that Phil Lowe is not mucking around anymore and that was the actual straw that broke the camel's back. So that's uh, that's a situation now. Until then, it's just been this uh, this craziness of looking at uh, consumer spending. Consumer spending has been up um, going into this for, for all this time and, and in the conversations that I've had, particularly with Adelaide Timbrell from ANZ, senior economist there, she's great. Was looking at confidence is way down, but spending kept on kept on being way up, and that was sort of really putting people out. The fact that no matter what happened, people the, the expression that I came up with was uh, restaurants chock full of people, uh, all complaining about how bad the economy is, and they kept on spending and things kept on going over. The RBA is going to keep on raising in, in the face of that, and I think that what happened on Tuesday was that point that happens in an, an economy, and which is sort of that recessionary thing where you've just gone, you know what, that's it. We cut everything, and as a family, this goes, this goes, and this goes, and that's it. And I've got these stages, these levels that I like to describe to people where you say, okay, kids, every Friday night, we, we go out for pizza, and it's good. Football training's done, and school's done. We go out for pizza, and it's going to be good. We have a good meal. Mum and dad get a bottle of wine. Kids get a uh, get a Fanta or a water, or whatever you get. And then that sort of gets downgraded to be, you know what, okay, dad's going to go up, and, uh, or we'll get a pizza delivered from that same place. And then it sort of gets downgraded again. Um, dad's going to go up and, and get the pizza. Mum's going to go and get the pizza um, or pick up on the way home at the pizza. And then it downgraded again. We're going to get the pizza from Woolies. And then downgraded again. We're going to get the cheap pizza from Woolies. And then downgraded again. We're going to make the pizza and downgraded again to a place that you don't even want to think about. That's where things sort of start to get a little bit disastrous. I think that we're sort of in the middle of that one now of just going, hey, guys, we're not going to that pizza place anymore. We're getting the Woolies one or we're already at the we're just going to make our own sort of situation at home. You can sort of take that and extrapolate that out to the rest of the economy and you've got sort of a feeling of where we are right now. That's where I'm thinking. So look, I've put together this thesis, which is going to hit, it's going to be linked on on, on this uh, on this page for everyone to have a bit of a look at later on. But if you can see through, and I'm looking at the, at the charts as I go here, I don't want to show them because it's too hard to do. Um, consumer confidence is down. Again, it's almost down properly, properly to COVID lows. That's fascinating. Um, the next one, so, and, and that was good. Confidence has always been on its way down. It's getting lower, but spending never caught up. Now, ANZ again, monthly, um, ANZ observed spending annual change. That is That has dropped way down. It's now properly into the negatives and has been for the last couple of months. Dropped down another level there as well, which is fantastic. Travel off, shopping off, great. Groceries are staying flat. People need to eat, I'll get to that in a second. Dining and takeaway ticked up, but it has been coming down. Great, it's down in that in that 20, 15% off, 20% off my, a year on year area, um, which is great, but bad, but great. You know what I mean? Bad news is good news for us. Um, good news is bad news for RBA and us, right? So uh, now looking through this, so this is sort of where I'm gonna go. And people have been saying, okay, that's great, but you can see that everything is still kicking on. Where's the real pinch? Where's the real squeeze coming in? The Australian Prime RMBS 30 plus days delinquency rates by Vintage, and this is something that a lot of people put onto Twitter over the last couple of weeks, or at least the last week. 2022, what have I got here? 11 months after issuance, um, the number of 30 plus days delinquencies has gone back through. It's about 1.75%. Now, <clears throat> fascinatingly, that's for the months after issuance, over all of the years since that's been done, that's the highest. That's like twice as high as it would be for anything else. I mean, the highest since there was 1%. 2008, if you give you a good idea of sort of where delinquencies are. Delinquencies high, that means people are really starting to, to feel the pain. Unfortunately, this isn't good news, uh, but uh, but then pinch everything else that you can do. It's concerning. Mortgage delinquencies are up. The yield curve late last week inverted for the first time. The 210 has inverted. And again, another picture that I'm looking at here, but I won't post. That, uh, that's a, a, an inverted yield curve equals re recession. There's pages of stuff written about that. I'm not going to go into it, but that's sort of where that, that, that lies. The other part of my thesis of the world is that New Zealand has always been one step ahead of the rest of the world. They were the, the, the they hiked earlier, they've finished hiking now, and then last week they did declare that they are officially in a recession. Fascinating, bad for them, but you sort of see that 
where New Zealand has been ahead of the game, we will follow. The last part, or almost the last part here, something that came from Gareth Ed from CBA. Pulled a lot of stuff out of uh, out of the air for this thing. So it's like looking at um, the labour force. So the labour market is showing that it's loosening. So we had the huge jobs numbers last week. Um, they were phenomenal, four times as high as people were expecting. So what he's seeing is that the loosening is via more workers looking for extra hours. That tells me that people are really starting to struggle and really starting to get, um, uh, really starting to feel it. So that's that that's that next uh, thing that's coming in there as well. Um, are we in a recession? What happens in a recession? Now, here we go. Australia doesn't go boom bust. Now, keep in mind, remember that I had Emma Fisher from Early Funds Management on the podcast a while ago, and she said just this great way that Australia doesn't go boom to bust. We don't allow it on the street. We're all begging and, and living in the street, selling our houses. Australia goes boom to muddle through. So things don't usually go bad in Australia. We've usually got stuff that's going to go okay. But how do you diversify into this and how do you manage to stay safe? First off, discri- consumer discretionary. Get rid of it. You don't need it. You don't need it in this one. Discretionary, I don't care what the valuations are. It's a trap. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. I'm not going gold. I'll leave that for another person to talk to you about gold. That's okay. Steer clear of discretionary. Staples. Groceries, people still need to eat and they still will eat. They won't eat the fancy stuff. They'll still need to eat anything, which means you need your woolies and your coals and that sort of stuff to be able to get you through. Staples. Emerging markets, a great way to diversify. If you don't want to be a part of the Australian recession, join the Indian boom, which is still going quite well. Not China. I still not not a huge confidence in China. Um, I, I, not a lot of conviction in commodities. I still like copper and oil long term. Buy them on big dips. That's it. I've managed to get there. I'm James Wheel in Australian Mutual Funds Exchange, and I hope that this has been very helpful. That was my seven minute market wrap. Any more details? Please send me a note. Otherwise, keep out, keep an eye out, and stay safe. Thanks very much. Bye.